gosh. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our PM service. It's so nice to have you all join us tonight. And hello to those who are watching online. As we do every Sunday, we're going to start off with some praise and worship. So may I invite you all to stand, if you can, and join us as we sing. My Savior. Redeemer, lifting me from the miry clay, almighty, forever, I will never be the same, cause you came near, from the everlasting to the world we live, the Father's only Son. Father, we thank you for all that 
you've done in our lives. Oh, you're a promise keeper. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Father, we praise you tonight. We lift your name on high. Oh, you deserve the praise, Jesus. Sing of your promises, the God of Abraham. You're the God of covenant and faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you do just what you say. No, the storms may come and the winds may blow. I'll remain. Steadfast, and let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. We sing this church. Great is your faithfulness to.
Shout of praise, Father, for you are so worthy, Lord. Being so in your mighty name, being so Lord. We exalt your name, Father. You're so worthy, so worthy. Oh, Father, you are worthy.
Father, we praise you. Oh, Father, you are so May I just encourage you to take this time to just sing a song of praise that's in your heart. Sing a song of gratitude for all the things that God has done for you. Thank you. We come to you and praise you for your glory, your majesty, and your holiness, Father. As a body of Christ, we praise you. You may all be seated. So for those who don't know me, my name is Beck, and I'll be sharing the communion today. So who enjoys looking through their photo albums? I can spend hours just looking at past moments from years ago. By just looking at the photo, I can remember the emotions that I was feeling that day, the thoughts I was thinking. I can remember what I did before that moment and what the temperature was like. But there are certain photos that also bring up deeper emotions. I found a photo from the 6th of August 2020. On this date, I went on a five-day hiking camp. We travelled 35 kilometres along the Florio Peninsula, which is basically the same distance as walking from Port Nalonga Beach to Semaphore Beach, or walking 200 times around a soccer field. And can I tell you that I struggled on this camp? I was genuinely surprised that I didn't drop dead of exhaustion. I was carrying a pack that was half my body weight I was still recovering from injury and it was the coldest winter in like 30 years. But amongst all this momentary suffering, I can never forget the closeness of God that I felt. 
One of the nights, I was shivering so badly that I couldn't get to sleep. I felt an urge on my heart to get out of my tent and seek God. So I withdrew from the camp into the dark wilderness of South Australia and sat gazing at the stars. All I did was sit in awe of God, in quietness, alone. In this moment, my eyes were opened and I just knew that God was with me and was always with me. Although I still had a couple days of hiking to go and my physical pain wasn't gone, I felt an assurance on my soul that would surpass my current suffering. It is these still quiet moments before the Father that can be life-changing. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 36 to 39, it says, Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. The Gospel counts 23 occasions when Jesus withdrew from the crowds to lonely places. We may wonder why. He did this not to seem holier than thou, or for attention, but to seek the Father. In times when he needed the most encouragement and strength from God, he would physically get up and go somewhere and be alone, and seek him. But Jesus did this not only in situations where he needed God, but frequently out of love for just who the Father is. And in doing some more reading, I found six reasons why Jesus would take time of solitude. Firstly, to prepare for a major task. Secondly, to recharge after hard work. Thirdly, to work through grief before making an important decision in a time of distress and to focus on prayer. Perhaps these could be reasons for us to do the same. Before it was Jesus' Jesus's time to be arrested, he earnestly sought God in the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed and prayed for this cup to be taken from him. But he would always say afterwards, Yet not my will, but yours be done. Jesus bravely took up the cup, suffered terribly at all capacities. He knew that at any moment he could call down the angels of heaven to take him away. He could have sent fire upon all who persecuted him but his present suffering did not compare to his future glory. He died for our sake. In his resurrection, he restored a right relationship with the Father. So in times of solitude, remember, this is the God we serve. The God who took our sins, gave us new life, and made a way for us to have a relationship with him. In whatever situation we may be feeling, God is there to comfort us to strengthen us and remind us why we serve him. He calls us into his presence. So as we take the bread and drink today, reflect on who God is to you. Still your heart before the Lord and worship him for who he is. You may eat and drink. Father, we thank you for who you are. We draw near to you today, Father, and we pray that, and we thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for dying on the cross for us, for taking our sins and for giving us new life so that we can have a relationship with you, so that we can have moments of solitude and draw near to your presence and speak to you. We love you, Father, and we praise you today. In Jesus' name, amen. So now we're going to be watching some announcements. Good evening. Welcome to Adelaide Christian Centre. Thanks for joining us. If you would like to give online, you can do so by visiting the church website and following the prompts. Or you can give through the f machine located at the back. If you are visiting us today and would like to connect with us, or you have changed your details recently, feel free to fill out our Connect With Us cards. For the next few weeks, we will be going through a series called 40 Days of Engaging People with Jesus. You can access all the notes through the app. Available now is our Global Missions Booklet. 
Here you can see all the different missions projects and people we actively support in. If you are in high school between year 6 and year 12, come join the Empower Youth. Youth is on every Friday night of the school term. We meet at church at 5.30pm and make our way to Temple Christian College to have our fun night. Follow the Empower Youth Instagram or join our Facebook group for weekly updates on the details. Our engaged young adults will be continuing the Alpha course this week for our Tuesday evening connect groups. It will carry through the next few weeks as our main study. We will be meeting at Church Cafe as we follow through the series. On March 25, we will have our first new arrivals dinner of the year. We would love to have your help in putting the night together, so please contact the church office if you are available to help. Amen. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> um, it's good to be here, and thank you for the opportunity to share tonight. Um, and I've been asked to share uh, in uh, relation to our 40 days of engaging people with Jesus. And um, I had a read through our booklet here, uh, Day 8, Jesus, Power and Our Response. And the reading was from uh, Mark Chapter 5. Are talking about the different people uh, that Jesus came across, the demon-possessed man, um, a girl who was dying and a, a desperate father asking for help, and then a woman who was healed. And so it's this lady that uh, I want to share about tonight uh, with us. And something that uh, Jesus never grew tired of doing or never grew tired of, was crowds of people that gathered around him. Yes, he uh, was physically, he would get physically tired and uh, needed to rest or go away to be alone with the Father. And that was uh, something that he did often. Uh, but mentally, emotionally, he never grew tired. He, he never had claustrophobia or stress from the constant needs of people because it was for people that Christ came. Jesus came for people and his response to crowds and to people was compassion. He had compassion on people and that's what um, caused him the love of the Father and the compassion towards these people. It was for them that he had come. But even in crowds or large numbers of people, Jesus still took notice of the needs of one. And, and this is the testimony of this woman. And I'll just read it. Um, I'm sure we're familiar with it, but we should always delight in hearing the scripture, no matter how many times we hear it, we hear the scripture. Then Mark chapter 5, verse um, starting at verse 25. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciple answered, and yet you can ask who touched me. But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. What a wonderful testimony. And so this woman who had been dealing with this issue for 12 years, the scripture tells us, 12 years of suffering, 12 years of spending money on doctors and trying many different remedies with no results. 12 years of rising hopes at seeing a different doctor 
Uh, but those hopes dashed when there was no change and her condition was worsening. But verse 27, when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. This woman does not want any publicity or attention, not from the people around, gathered around, nor from Jesus himself. She was expecting her touch of his cloak to be no different from anyone else in the crowd who was pressing in around him. She thought that he wouldn't notice her touch of his cloak. But her touching his cloak had a specific purpose and that's what Jesus responded to. It was different from all of the other uh, pressing around him from the crowd. And in verse 30, the scripture says, at once Jesus realised power had gone out from him. And so Jesus turned around. He wanted to see this person. His intention was not to embarrass them, but to give assurance to her. He wanted her to know that her faith in him is what caused her miracle, her faith in him. This time, she placed her faith in the right person. In verse 28, again, because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. That was inside her. This was what was in her heart. She thought within herself, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. That was her confession. I will be healed. I like um, in this uh, daily devotion that we're going through, it says here, just to read one line, by faith she reached out for Jesus' clothes, believing that she would be healed just by touching his garments. And that was... That was her desire and her desire, her, she got her miracle. Where did this woman's faith come from to receive her miracle? Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, Faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word about Christ. The message is heard through the word about Christ. It is faith that is born of God. Everyone in the world speaks about faith. Everybody talks about faith and people have faith that is in all kinds of things. People have faith in, in religion, they have faith in other people, they put faith in causes. But this faith is born of the Spirit of God. It was birthed in this woman's heart when she heard about Christ. It was a different faith from any other kind of faith and it produced the miracle for her. Jesus' dealings with people is not just about miracles either. It's about relationship. That's the ultimate prize, the ultimate goal. And we're looking at engaging people with Jesus for the purpose of relationship. That through faith and miracles, the message about Jesus and his love for everyone, people would come into an eternal loving relationship with him. How do we get people to engage with Jesus? We have to first engage with them. Amen? We have to. And that can just be through conversation, one-on-one -on -one people whom we meet just in normal conversation. It's easy to bring Christ into our conversations uh, because we love him and we have a desire for people to know him. Not to know the Jesus, a religious kind of Jesus that many people see him that way, but the real Jesus of the Bible, the Jesus as the gospel presents him. You know, um, I used to get so blessed of... Some of our, our workers and friends in India, before they came to Christ, and some of them uh, had sickness in their family, they would tell us their testimonies and, and uh, their, the way that they came to Christ. Someone in their family was very sick 
And they said there were many doctors that their family saw over many years. A lot of money was spent on, on seeing doctors and, and having all kinds of medical attention with no results. And then one day uh, a pastor or person came to their village and shared the gospel and prayed for the sick person in their family and they were healed and so that healing and the message resulted in their whole family coming to Christ and their lives were changed forever no turning back just wonderful testimonies of hearing the message and the miracle putting their faith in this Christ and and not as a result of that miracle they've been come into a relationship with Christ and met him, the true Christ. James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick and the Lord will make you well. It's that prayer, such a prayer, what kind of a prayer? A prayer offered in faith, directed toward Christ himself and his ability to heal and to take him at his word. And James said, that prayer offered in faith will heal the sick and the Lord will make you well. And so that was the faith of this woman in Mark chapter 5. She thought within herself, I will be healed. So I will go out amongst the crowd and I'll just touch his cloak and I will be made well. And she was, praise the Lord, hallelujah. And uh, that, you know, I've known this scripture many times. Um, I've known it for a long time and read it many times, but it's been so good just to read it again. Um, Pastor Mike asked me to share on this particular portion of scripture and you know I've been reading it very slowly reading it slowly reading it thoughtfully reading it carefully and asking the Holy Spirit show me something in this that I haven't seen before sometimes we can read scripture so many times we get used to it and we can miss things and it's good to read read it again and read it again read it uh, meditate on it Read it carefully, take notice of the words and, and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal something new to us that can birth a, a, you know, a stronger faith in our heart, a faith that we, that we have to hold on to something that we haven't seen or realised before. And so I've been really blessed with this. Hallelujah. Father, tonight we thank you so much for your word to us. We thank you, Lord, for this word that what happened to this woman and her willingness to put her faith when she heard about Jesus, she thought within herself, if I just touch his cloak, I will be healed. This faith that was born in her heart by the Holy Spirit. And Father, I thank you, Lord, for people here tonight that uh, may be facing uh, some things in their own life that need healing, whether it's physically or emotionally or other needs, Father. Lord, that we would hear a view afresh, that you would uh, bring a fresh revelation of yourself to us through your word, through the Holy Spirit, Father, and, and stir faith within our hearts, Lord. Let faith arise, Lord, within our hearts, Lord, tonight to see a miracle, Father God, and to have a victory in our lives, Father, for something that we've been believing you for and, and that we will see that come to pass, Father. We thank you, Lord, for your word and thank you, Father, that your word is sure and can be trusted, Father. We give you praise in Jesus' name and, Lord, that, that we would also uh, have that desire that would grow within us to through our own testimonies, Father, to be able to engage people with you, to be able to bring people to you, to into your presence. And just in our natural conversations, Father God, and through the Holy Spirit, be able to uh, 
uh, reveal who this Jesus is and, and all the good things that you have done for us, Father, your power and your work in our own lives, Father God, and that we would be that fragrance of Christ to those around us. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Rachel, for a very wonderful message. Let's give her a round of applause. All right, we're going to finish our service with one more song. So may I invite you all to stand up, please, as we sing. My Saviour, Redeemer, lifted me from the mighty clay, almighty, forever. I will never be the same, cause you came here from the everlasting to much for joining us tonight and thanks to those who watched online we hope you have a lovely week ahead and we'll see you next sunday